this that's holding up a spring-loaded pallet. We put a cap on this. One of the biggest myths with our flame arresters is they're hard to take apart. That you have to take apart the whole piping in order to take the flame bank out. That's not true at all. What you have to do is loosen the jack screws. You're going to have to remove at least two of them. On the larger ones you may have to remove three or four uh, depending on, on what you're doing. It doesn't matter whether it's horizontal, horizontal, horizontal or uh, vertical. Doesn't matter. Let's back up here. So once that stem melts, it'll still slam shut even if it's vertical. Then. Correct. It's not going to get cocked. What we down. do is we put a little lid on it with a window. So periodically you come over and take this cap off and you look through this window and if you see a piece, the stem in there, the piece of silver, you know that your flame element is fine and that that fusible link has not melted or deteriorated. Typically what you'll get is a spike in the gas. All of a sudden your pressures go crazy because you're not getting flow through this valve anymore. First thing you do is go and look at this and see. You can put it as your periodical maintenance every three months, pop this cap off, just make sure it's there. Um, to replace it, ours is quite a bit easier than our competitors. Our competitors, you have to take the top off, take this whole spring mechanism, put it in, and then force this all back down. Ours, you simply pull this off, just like we did here, put the fusible element in, screw this back up, and it pushes the spring up. So you don't even have to take any of this apart, so there's no extra gaskets cap to, to, to force everything. it all up, preload it, correct. Really simple. If it does burn out, you just take it, dump it out, clean it out, put a new one in, screw it back in. Five minutes. Now, is there a part number for there, or we just say, um, babe, we need a... They're all the same, no matter what size. There is a part number. Um, um, you, you, could, you could probably stock a couple, but it's not a very common item to wear out. Um, so, probably by the time you do it, you'll have to call me and say, hey, my flame trap's shot. I don't know what's going on because it'll be years from now whether you have to do anything to it. Getting back to the flame arrester, we use what they call jack screws. You loosen up the ones without the double bolts. You loosen the other sides with the double bolts. And then you simply jack the flame arrester apart, the whole body. On the bigger ones, you'd have to use a wrench to do this. These are what they call jack screws, which just spreads it open. As you notice, it doesn't take a whole lot. There's gaskets in here, and then you remove the flame bank. Our larger ones, we have a handle on them to make them a little easier. On even a larger one, the best thing to do is put a jack underneath them to hold it right in position. You don't have, have much force. That way, when you drop this back down, it's in position. Pretty, pretty simple. We use a crimped ribbon design in our flame arresters. It's a thin sheet and then a crimped ribbon sheet that is rolled. It's pressed into our housing and then welded in place. In comparison to our competitor that uses those flat square sheets where you pull off the side cover and slide them out, they're sold as remo easy removable and easy cleaning. This is just as easy to remove by using the jack screws. There's no way you cannot have an element in here. You have to put an element back in. Usually you get a spare element, you put it in, take this one out and clean it. Soak it in solution that's not going to damage aluminum. Use a high pressure hose. Never force anything through it, like a rod or something like that. If you change this hydraulic diameter of these holes and you have a flame here, it'll go right through it. And that's the reason we weld them in and don't allow you to take them apart. What what solution would you recommend? recommend? What, whatever you guys have that won't attack a little. What do you what do you? Have? We, we don't we don't say anything. I mean, because everybody is different. <laughs> so, yeah. Usually usually just soaking it in some mild soap and 
and so all of that is aluminum. High pressure. Some of this stuff, it's, it, it'll get in there and it'll bond on, and, and you have a hard time getting it out. Yeah. If if you can't clean it, just the surface here, then you just get in it. But usually soaking it, I mean, it's 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 just usually foam and stuff, and then the high pressure hot water will usually eat well, it away and so take it up. It's okay with to use a high pressure washer then. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we've been. As long as you don't take, as long as you don't force it apart. You know, try to cut it and force it out, or run any kind of rods like you would maybe clean an old radiator or something. You don't want to do oh, that. Just pressure washing. You know, just pressure washing, right? So we're not even using solutions anymore. <laughs> and if it and if it doesn't clean up, you get a new one. This this is a safety device. I'm, the reason we don't make a square one is this is put in by a press. I mean, for a human to put this in, it's not going to happen to keep that hydraulic diameter. These are all FM approved, all through the sizes, from our 2 inch all the way to 12 inch. Our competitors only have UL approval up to 6 inch. So that's telling you, and FM is a company that tests the performance of the valve. So when you clean this, you put it back in, FM still says it's still a safe valve after someone else has touched it from the factory. With those individual sheets, what typically happens is somebody will leave a sheet out. You can't quite get it all together, so you leave one out. That changes the whole integrity of the flame arrestor, and that's the reason we don't make a square one. Now, so. on these stems, uh, notice you have it after the after the flame arrestor. Um, that's the only way it should go on, right? And direction of flow is right on it. So if your flow is coming through here, you're going through the flame arrestor first, and then here. It can protect either way. You're protecting a flame here. A flame arrestor's job is to let gas pass, but stop a flame. Each size is rated. I'd have to look it up. I don't know the ratings off the top of my head. But there's a certain amount of burn time. If there's a flame here, the flame arrestor length, depending on what gas it is, it has to last X amount of hours before it burns completely through the flame arrestor. What it's, the flame arrestor's job is to stop the flame and not allow anything here. By the time it burned through this flame arrestor, other things have also melted in the system, like this fusible link to shut off the gas. What does that like to melt that? Pardon? What does the link melt at? 220 degrees. 220 degrees. And uh, we have the uh, areas that don't even have uh, the shutoff valve. Just the the the, the um, isn't it recommended they both go hand in hand? Not 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 normally. Not necessarily. No. No. These are usually used at the flare end uh, or at the top of the digester coming off the digester. Those are your two main places we see the, the shutoff valve. Flame arresters can be anywhere where you might have an ignition source. Um, you're going to see it at the flare, you're going to see it on top of the digesters, on top of the breather valves, um, or below the breather valves. Coming off of uh, gas compressors, gas mixers. Uh... Anywhere you might have a back flow of, of an ignition point or the other way. So to put this back together, you simply line it up and then back off the jack screws. What's the normal pressure drop across that? I would have to look that up. Uh, is there a, a pressure drop if you start seeing increased pressure drop? That's when you recommend cleaning. Correct. The, uh, flame arrestor. What what we have is an option. We can put instrument taps in here. That's what these glasses are for. <coughs> And you could put a differential pressure gauge across it, measure it, clean, and then periodically come and measure it, and that way you know when, when you need to clean it. I don't know what your PM schedule is. I, you'll, it'll depend on the digester. These you just leave loose, and then go ahead and tighten these around. You don't want to be too forceful with these. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to seal them, because you're not dealing with a high pressure system anyway. Uh, we have seen these ears break off if you know you're really cranking on them, so they don't have to be that that tight. So this here, it's once you drill this, it's hollow over here. You drill all the way through. All the way through. Yeah. All the way down here. And you'll be right, that. Okay. It's an option we can add to it. No, this this fusible link is. Will it matter if it's horizontal or vertical? Or, or, or these are typically run this direction, horizontal. We don't typically see them vertical, but they can. You can use them vertical. We do have quite a few applications that are vertical. Then you just 
just go around and snug them up. That's all there is to it. You also notice our flame arresters are straight across. Our competitors drop down. So they always ask you to put a drip trap on the bottom. Because condensate will sit in here and fill this, fill this up. Also, you should mount your piping on a little bit of an angle, slope down, so all the condensation will drip out of it. But since ours are flat, you will not have, unless your piping's full, you will not have condensation in it. We do offer, again, a boss here that could be drilled out, and you could put a, a drip trap on the bottom if you want it. Or you put it in the low spot of your piping. And you said you go up to an 8 inch? We go up to 12, probably. Standard, we've built bigger. We're doing a 48 inch flame arrestor for Hyperion, City of Los Angeles. Here, we'll build it next year. So that's. This thing's only made for basically dry gas, though? No, it's actually a wet gas. Wet gas arrangement? Yeah, that's the digester is a wet gas. That's why you get the plugging. <coughs> because you're getting that moisture through it all yeah, the time. Been doing well, that. what I'm talking about this deal here, is it the components in that stainless steel? This is all aluminum. All aluminum. It's all aluminum. So everything's all aluminum. But you guys carry uh, a stainless we, flame arrest. We, we could build this thing all out of stainless. Typically with digester, we do aluminum. It'll kind of be heavier. We can build uh, the flame bank, aluminum with stainless steel internals. Yeah. We can do it stainless steel with stainless steel. We do carbon steel for the industrial world but you wouldn't want carbon steel out here so we see a lot of a lot of municipalities going to uh, stainless all stainless but the cost is yeah incredible mm -hmm. but we we build it so, uh, well, we're trying the pressure washer thing right now we'll see how it goes it seems to be doing pretty good now We normally do a, uh, a monthly PMs on those things, but since our gas here is so bad, sometimes we have to uh, soak them in solution. So you just have spare banks? Uh, no, not really. That would be your best bet. Get a spare bank for each size. Pull it out, put the spare one in, then you can clean it, you know, let it soak for a few days and get them nice and clean. And I can call the factory and see if they have any recommendation on cleaning solutions. Yeah, because aluminum is kind of a, you know, I mean, there's not that much uh, solvents out there that I mean, uh, for aluminum. I just don't know what you're allowed to dump and things like that as far as hazardous waste. I you know they've really cut down on a lot of the solutions you can use. We can go up to the top. Sediment trap is to remove the sediment in the gas so that you get a drier, cleaner gas on the other side. Your digester gas comes down. This has a elbow that is slightly turned to create a vortex in there. Then there's a plate inside. So your, your gas spins around, knocks out any of the sediment, and then this tube comes out and pulls the gas from the center. So you're getting a cleaner, drier gas. Typically you leave some water in this so that the sediment has a place to gather. Here you have a dip tube, you pull this out and you can uh, put a rod down there and check how much the sediment is in the tank. Um, as the sediment fills up, the, uh, you, you want to drain it and clean it out. We give you a two inch drain clean here. You could even pull out the lid and get it really clean or just force water down this and until it's clean. On the other side you have a sight glass so you know how much water is in it. Usually typically keep it about a quarter full just, just at the where you can see the side glass over here. Right above that, where that pipeline is? Correct. We're talking about sediment. Anything sediment is a debris uh, that's going to come that's up. coming in. Right. Yeah. And coming out. Correct. This one will probably stay pretty clean because you have a foam separator up there. So it'll it'll probably keep pretty so clean. So if there's any sediment, we just open up that, that plug right there and everything should come out. Correct. You're going to want to ice, uh, probably shut it off or however you're going to do it. Because it will it will have gas in it. Digest again. But that's an empty, excuse me, but that's an empty uh, thing in there right now. Correct. I mean, as far as there shouldn't be, shouldn't be anything in it. <coughs> uh, What's the life expectancy of that? Depends on your gas. We coat it inside with a uh, submersible, submersible epoxy coat. We've seen them last 15 years. 
sometimes a little lower. It is carbon steel, so you want to, the, the coating inside is, is what's going to deteriorate eventually. The drip trap here is installed incorrectly. It's supposed to come out to this. It's supposed to be mounted straight this straight down. This is very simple to operate. Just simply turn it to drain it and now off. There's a disc in here. This holds, I think it's either three, this is a three quart. It holds three quarts of moisture. You turn the knob, it'll drain it out without releasing any gas. The disc shuts off this side and opens up this side. That's mounted incorrectly, huh? Yeah. Hey, I didn't say it. I didn't say anything. It looks good. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get that corrected. This side up right there. <laughs> I can't read it from there. What's that hole on the side of that thing now? Is that just a vent? Yeah, just a vent. Yeah, all right. So that's all there is to this. Pretty straightforward. They are marked in and out. We checked that this morning. So is that stainless or is this iron? This is carbon steel. So are you guys gonna change that thing before you split? Maybe. <laughs> Can you put a mm -hmm. unit on that? Well, you guys are asking a lot. <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> We've taken care of you. <laughs> we'll go upstairs. Require two. Typically on a digester, it's it's for a, a backup. So if you take one out of service, your tank is still protected. You never want to take them both out of service at the same time, because then your tank is not protected. Again, the flame arrestor is the same. Uh, as far as the maintenance, which we showed downstairs with the jack screws, you do not have to take this all apart to, to do that. You just simply jack it up. This one has a handle, so you just remove these two. Uh, and then actually, this one you should only have to move the one and jack it up and be able to pull it out. This is a breather valve. This is a pressure and vacuum breather valve. If the tank is pulling a vacuum, it's set at two inches of water column. This pallet will lift and pull vacuum in to protect the tank. If the tank is over pressured, it will push out through the flame arrestor and you'll get venting out of the side here. The reason you put a flame arrestor here is this is a source of ignition point. If this is venting and there's an ignition here, it will catch on fire and uh, the flame arrestor then will protect the tank. We've got pictures of these with a direct lightning hit because there is gas sitting in here all the time and the flame arrestor protected the tank. So it's, uh, it definitely works. Maintenance on this, there, there's, it's very little. There's simply a diaphragm in this, a seal on the pallet. It's held in with one bolt and you replace the, the seal and put the bolt back in. The seat on ours is integral. It's machined right into the body, so there's no potential leak point on the, on the seal there. In order to clean that, you just simply clean it. If there's any pitting or anything like that, you would take the valve off, have that remachined, and then uh, put the pallet back on. Growth offers that service if, if need be. Vacuum pallet is exactly the same, uh, just on the other side of it. Pretty simple, pretty simple valve. Now this one here, does this still have a uh, that plastic seal? It's a Buna N. Yeah. Yes. We still have this. Yep. Buna N is what we use for digesters. We have Teflon available, or Viton, or any of the other exotics that you may want. Recent bean. You know what uh, inches of water column is on the? This on the one ball? we just set this morning to 14 inches, okay. and two inches on the vacuum. It came from the factory at six. I'm going to see if I get new, yeah. new tags for those so that you, you have them. And I notice it doesn't have a, a, a melting stem on it. Uh, now, this is simply a flame arrestor and then a breather valve. This this will not shut off the gas. You, you do not want to shut off the gas to your digester. If we put one of these here and it was flowing and it burned, then you would shut it off and your roof of your digester would come off. These are simply designed to protect the, the digester from overpressurizing or pulling too much of a vacuum. The, these tanks look large, but they're they're very fragile in the respect of how much pressure they can hold. And so these are simply used for tank protection. You have you know somebody replaces a pump, puts a bigger pump on it, and you know starts to flow in and they pop the tank. So you might get a, a release of a pressure here or a plug line 
and you're not pushing the gas out, your gas will come out here. And that's what it's designed for. Tim, do you set these things on there, or do you have something on there? No, once you set it, set. Yeah, because you know, it's the like... PM on the, on the weights? On the... There's nothing you have to do to them. Once okay. they're set, they're set. I mean, in case something gets in there, we, we had that happen actually two days ago yeah you just clean them i mean th well, there's they, nothing to they taking do them have a green on them clean them yeah you put more weight on it no we uh, got sludge in there yeah oh you got sludge in there yeah okay well, the, uh, then you would the, clean them and and i just gave him a, a book that shows how much weight it takes per square inch and you just simply weigh it make sure it's correct okay. but as long as you didn't remove any of the weights and you put it back together it's going to be fine we normally uh check the uh the seal on it Stuff like that. Right. Make sure there's no bird's nest yeah. underneath. No, that's all we do on that, and then the flame rest will be clean. We got a gauge hatch over here, picking after a new construction, because they'll sit around like this open, you'll get debris in them, different things like that. Before this digester goes into service, you want to make sure that the rim here is clean and that our seal here is also clean. It's a Vienna rubber seal, just like the other. Well, that one over there, Dave, um, it's got that clear plastic, real thin a gasket on that one. I mean, on uh, that, that two inch over there. Is that a... Uh, the vacuum? I'll take a look at it right there. You also want to be gentle when you're closing them. Make sure this is centered as it's going down. You said this one has worked exactly the same. You see this is a, I think it's a six inch. You might have to remove a few more of the jack screws in order to, uh, looks like you'd have to do two or maybe if you pull from the top you may have to pull four in order to get that flame arrestor out but it works exactly the same. You do not have to do any, undo any of this piping. I mean, it's, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch in order to get that out. So it's pretty straightforward. This here is our foam separator. Similar to... Did you say from? Foam. Oh, foam. Okay. <laughs> I believe this one's going to be removed, is it not, Chris? This is the flame trap. It's... If you look at this installation, if you had foam coming up into the flame arrestor, you all know it's going to stop. That foam is not going to get through that flame arrestor. So this, this foam separator is never going to see any foam. Yeah, it's just too hot. <laughs> That's possible too. <laughs> but the, that should be on the other side of it. You, you should have your gas coming in here, your foam coming in here, separating it out, pulling the gas out, and move that down into this piping here. Or move this over, which would be that more work. Only mount it horizontally? That's where it's designed. It can work either way. Uh, so we can relocate it perhaps over here. You could probably you could put it in this line. Sure, it would work. This is simply fills up. It's got two, two, a baffle in it and sprayers on the top. It's a water spray to knock down the foam. You're going to have the uh, maintenance as far as making sure the nozzles are clean, the spray nozzles, and if it fills up with sediment, cleaning out the sediment, but it looks like it's going to stay pretty clean the way it's going to be running, forcing it all out. Is that on this handbook here, David? I have handouts oh, okay. for those, which is all of the models actually. So what would cause it if, uh, say for instance, you're still getting too much foam, so something goes wrong with this, uh, what, uh, what are the symptoms of knowing that it, something's gone wrong with it? It's typically going to be the spray nozzles are clogged. Or the settlement bolts too full. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of settlement in it because it looks like it's going to be well, flowing well, back out. Just because we have other ones, so I'm just, you know, just. So there's. Uh, but I don't see any switches. water level switches. Yeah, there's no solenoid switches. Is that what they're supposed to be, or? Yeah, 
must be. This was your guys' design, so there's no water switches on this. They're just the spray nozzle. So what do those spray nozzles look like? Are they... Are you on the very back? They, uh, there's, a, there's a foam separator.